That's right, power supplies are changing. In fact, it's been almost 20 years since the Humble Power Supply has seen a major update. And if you're looking to upgrade your PC with all the new release hardware coming out, you've no doubt realized it's gonna cost a pretty penny. I mean, have you seen those rumored AM5 prices? Ooh. Upgrading a new CPU, motherboard, RAM, and graphics card will send you back a bit. But should that list also include a power supply? There's a lot of mixed information going around right now about ATX 3.0, otherwise known as the newest generation of power supplies. So allow us to clear up everything for you and answer the question, do you need to upgrade your power supply? The short answer is no, but also yes. Maybe? Let's get into it. First, let's quickly break down what a power supply does. A power supply or PSU, if you're a cool tech expert like me, basically functions to supply your PC with power. It converts power from your wall into power that can run all of your components. PSUs have stayed the same for a very long time, featuring an eight plus six pin PCIe connector, which is used to help power your GPU. This type of cable is, if we're gonna be honest, really outdated. Fun fact, wasn't even properly designed for working with 500 watt or higher drawing GPUs in the first place. This is where ATX 3.0 power supplies begin to differ from the older models. ATX 3.0 was designed by Intel with this new series of hardware in mind, with both CPUs and GPUs demanding more power than ever before. ATX 3.0 allows for more direct power straight to your GPU. This is done with the introduction of this fancy 16-pin PCIe connector called 12VHPWR. And for those who don't spend their days memorizing tech acronyms, that means 12 volts high power. Just from an aesthetics perspective, this is a game changer. Some of the beefier 30 series cards, for example, required upwards of three 8-pin connectors to supply the card with enough power, which would often result in a cable cluttered mess. But with the new connector, it's just one cable that's actually on the slimmer side too, which is great for cable management. Power-wise, this cable is also a lot beefier than its predecessors. While the older cables were designed to support up to 150 watts of power each, the new 16-pin one can provide up to 600 watts of power with just the solo cable. So a total power of 670 watts if you count the power from the PCIe slot as well, which is an awesome upgrade. The way the cable essentially works is like a USB-C connector, offering a single solution instead of various other connectors on the market. It can supply the amount of power required to your components depending on the implementation, with markings on them showing how much power they can deliver, with the higher options only really being needed for dedicated water-cooled cards. Another super cool feature about this cable is the little baby pins down the bottom. These allow for direct communication between your power supply and your GPU, effectively creating a little group chat between the two of them. This can help your PSU know exactly how much power it needs to supply and the GPU knows how much power it will require. Lastly, ATX 3.0 features a new power excursion limiter. Now, if you're saying, Keely, what the heck is that? Don't worry, me too. Well, I know now, but I got you. Basically, it's a fancy term for it aims to prevent power spikes. And what is a power spike? Well, if you imagine a PSU is like the ripples in the ocean and a power spike is when a giant power wave hits. It's a momentary giant spike of power and it was a known issue with the 30 series graphics cards. The goal of ATX 3.0 is to entirely remedy that, acquiring better electronics able to produce two times the max rated wattage for 10 microseconds for up to 10% of its running time. Basically, in English, the power supplies have a lot more standards to meet so it ensures constant, stable power. This is definitely a good thing and it shows that Intel is actually paying attention to consumer concerns, but, the downside is that it might mean these PSUs are a little bit more expensive as they require more specific construction. There are also a bunch of other features worth exploring too, such as their increased efficiency, the new certification system and faster power cycling. But that's not what you're all here for. You're here to know the answer, the full reason as to whether you should buy one of these big fat bad boys or not. So should you get one of these? Well, in my humble opinion, if you're already busting your bank getting a full upgrade, honestly, you might as well. The increased power consumption of both the newer CPUs from AMD and the graphics card from Nvidia really showcase how power hungry new components are gonna be. We can only infer that going forward, this will continue to increase. So honestly, 
why not future proof? Especially if you're running with DDR5, which let's be honest, you're in the gut because you had to. I would argue that the PSU is actually a better value upgrade as there is a ton of new components here, whereas DDR5 just isn't quite doing it for me just yet in comparison to DDR4. Also, I'm honestly such a fan of the minimal cable look. One cable versus three is an easy dub for the ATX 3.0 in my books. Lastly, the quality of these ATX 3.0 PSUs are probably gonna be better than their predecessors, meaning better power regulation and no doubt longer lifespans. However, if upgrading is not on your mind and you're not that fussed about future-proofing your PC, it's not a necessity right now. So don't go and throw away your PSU in the trash just yet. It still has a few good years in it. Well, unless it caught fire or something, then obviously, oh yes, throw it in the trash. Why do I have to tell you this? So, why was there so much fuss about this? I mean, the number of videos and articles that make you feel like it was time to get the tombstone ready for your current PSU was very confronting. While I don't know why exactly, I would hazard a guess that the internet, as it's one to do, things got a little bit out of hand. One rumor turned into another, which turned into catastrophizing. So hopefully this video was able to put your mind at ease. Anyway, that was our deep dive into ATX 3.0 whether you should go buy it or not. Thanks for watching. I'll pop all the videos and articles and all the stuff we saw in the description box so you can have a look yourself if you like. If you have any questions about anything we mentioned, pop them in the comment section down below. We'll chat, we'll gossip, we'll pray. Also, feel free to check out any of the videos around the screen and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I lost my mind at the end there. Yeah, I mean, that much is obvious. <laughs>